Hello everyone, Kirk Powell here. Today I want to talk about P10 panels. I've watched many things on P10 panels and it's taken me some time to figure out some stuff. But, I want to start off by saying if you've not watched Ken McMaster's and Scott Hansen's Essentials class on matrix panels, you need to watch that. That class was great. It has a lot of great information and helps you get started. Uh, matter of fact, I bought my panels through CFOL's 2017 pre-sale and I've not been able to get them to work but that class led me down the right path. So I want to talk about hardware because there's not a lot of information out there about how hardware, how all this connects together. And then I'll talk a little bit more about the software and I want to show you some troubleshooting techniques I use to do mine. So I'm going to set mine up in the, the weird situation it was in when I started and all the troubleshooting I did to solve it. So let's get started. So why is this called a P10 panel? Well, because it's 10 millimeters between the center to the center of the pixels. So there's P5 panels, they're 5 millimeters in between P3.5s or 3.5 millimeters, and I've seen everything all the way down to 0.8 millimeter pixel pitch, which is phenomenal looking, but way out of our price range on this hobby. So P10 panel has 32 pixels wide by 16 pixels high for a total of 512 pixels. Here's the back of the panel. Power connection, very obvious, you gotta have power before anything will work. You've also got these arrows here. These arrows are very important because as you build your matrix, you might wanna make sure that they're pointing to the top. This signifies the top of the panel, which is this, bottom, top. Make sure all your arrows are going the same way because yes, you can connect them together like this, even though your connectors are swapped around, you can still make it work. So, input, it's called JN on this panel. On some panels I've seen it labeled as input. Output is J out on this panel, but I've also seen it called output as well. So obviously input, output, power, arrows, those are the important parts of the back. Okay, so your panels generally come with the ribbon cables for control and signal, and a power cable. Power cable is able to control two panels with one cable, and it has spades on the end of it. I do not use the spades because I use distro board, so I cut the spades off, put ferrules on, and go into the distro board. Uh, I do not use Beagle Bone to control mine. I use the Raspberry Pi. So with that, I have the CFOL matrix hat that obviously goes onto it, like just very similar to the way the Beagle Bone works. It's just a little different. The big difference is that there's only three outputs, and I think that the Octo Scroller has eight. Uh, so you can obviously have a lot more panels connected to it. Uh, so I'm limited in my output, so that's obviously a problem for me um, with my matrix, but I figured it out. I designed my own case for my Raspberry Pi and everything. I'll be glad to share STLs if anybody's interested uh, PM me. Uh, also, you'll need 5-volt power supplies, obviously, to power everything. Here's my matrix. It is 6 panels high by 5 panels wide. So it's 96 pixels by 160 pixels. So multiply that together, you get 15,360 pixels total. Divide by 512 gives you 30, which is 30 universes for one color. Times 3 equals 90 universes total to control the RGB of this panel. Here's the back of my matrix. Uh, yeah, it's a test bed. It's in my garage. It's about functionality, not about looks at this point. So let's start off with the power. Power, as I mentioned before, each cable controls two panels. I did mine in pairs of rows. They come down to the distro boards. The distro boards feed down to the power supplies. Right now I'm running off of two power supplies. I may up that to three in the final product, uh, TBD. Okay, so signal flow, like I mentioned before, running mine off of a Raspberry Pi 3B with the CFOL matrix hat on top. The uh, matrix hat has five volt power. It's got three matrix outputs on it. Number one is the one in the center by itself. Number two is the one over by the RJ45 of the Raspberry Pi. Number three is the one closest to the power pins of the matrix hat. So row one, I'm coming off of it, going up to there. I have 30 panels. I have three outputs, six rows. So two rows per output is what mine is. The head is capable of doing 12 panels 
per output, I'm putting 10 on all three outputs, and that gives me my 30 panels. So I come in one, use the short jumper that came with the panels to go to panel two, three, four, five, and six. I jump it all the way across. Okay, so now since we used the jumpers coming this way, now I had to create custom cables going the other way because I didn't, all I had was short cables and I had a couple really long cables like this one I actually bought. But I ended up buying a whole bunch of this ribbon cable and connectors from Mouser to make my own cables. And I'm going to remake a couple of these to tighten them up a little bit because the shorter the cable, the better. So, jump into the row number two on the same output of the Pi Hat is going from my output to my input of the next row. Then I go from the output of that panel to the input of the next panel. Then I go output to input, output to input, output to input. So as you can see, it takes quite a bit of cable. As you can see, the arrow pointing up, as I talked about earlier, pointing to the top, top, bottom. All my arrows are pointing in the same direction up. So that's how I have it routed in Falcon Pipe Layer. Okay, so that concludes kind of the hardware overlook of everything. So from here on out, I've set everything up to be raw. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you my setup in the software and then I'll show you the results on it. And then we'll walk through how I troubleshot it to make it all work. Okay, so let's look at the Pi player, how I have it set up on the Raspberry Pi. I'm using bridge mode because I'm using it as a controller, not as a player. So let's look at the IO. My IO is set up uh, E131 interface is the wired Ethernet connection. I am not using wireless. Um, I have 91 universes set up because I'm using 510 channels per universe. Uh, it spills over to one more universe. So it's all there. I'm using Unicast as well, and I have a completely different subnet set up in my house for this, for the Christmas lights and everything, just to, for lack of confusion. So let's look at the LED panel layout. Uh, you have to enable it. Obviously, like I said, watch the other video and that'll explain a lot of this to you. My panel selection, 32. Top left, top left is my commonality between this and X lights. I'm running at 60% brightness, just why burn them out while I'm sitting here in my garage. Uh, RGB and standard wiring, that's what we have it set up. So looking at it from the back point of view of where the wiring is, I've got panel one, two, three, four, five, just as we saw earlier. Then I jump down to row number two for six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then output two has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and output three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten as well. So let's look at X lights and see how that is set up. Okay, so here's my X lights set up. Uh, as you can see, I got my 91 universes just like in my Pi player, 510 channels per universe. I actually use universes 101 through 191 because that's the way it's going to work in my show. Uh, it's arbitrary. You can use whichever universes works for you. Don't You don't have to use the same universes as me. So set it up your way. My layout, as you can see, I've got my, my matrix. It has 96 pixels high by 160 pixels wide. Top left, just like in the Pi Player, is set up and everything, so that's ready to go. My sequence, I've got a sequence, a test sequence already set up. It's got a film roll in it, so let's roll it and see how it looks. So as you can see, there's some real serious problems. The video is, you can't even tell what the video is. The colors are all off. you got all these lines in here between the panels. Nothing's matching up. So where do you start troubleshooting? Well, let's go back to the software and, uh, and pick it up from there. Okay, so going back into the Falcon Pie player, uh, where do you start? Uh, you know, the, what I did first was I came over to the test tools. There's a great display testing function in this, and this is awesome. It works great. So let's go at enable test mode, and you probably see some stuff rolling through the screen right now. Uh, so what I like to do is I'm going to take all these faders down here and turn them all the way down to zero. And then I'm going to click this fill. So now I can control what, I, what I'm looking at. So let's look at the red. Okay, that looks good. So good so far. Let's look at green. Uh-oh, got a bit of an issue here. Green is not green. Let's check the blue. And looky there. The blue is green. 
So if we w go back into here, let's just double check everything right now. So my blue and the green are flopped. My red's okay, so let's try RBG instead of RGB. So we know the red's good, but let's just make sure it's still good. Yep, still good. Let's check green. Hey, looky there. Green is good. Okay, let's check the blue just to be cautious. Okay, yep, blue looks great. Okay, so we're good here. So let's go back over here. Let's exit test mode. And then let's go back over here to our channel outputs. And let's go to our LED panel and change it from RGB to RBG. Save and restart the player. And we should be good to go. Great. So now let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. Wow, okay, so that's still really jacked up, even though the color, we know the color was wrong because we used the test patterns to prove that that's wrong, we've corrected that problem. So, we still made no headway, everything is still discombobulated. You know, uh, let's look at some different material, let's look at a, a standard wave and see how that shows up, because that should be very simple to see how a wave works. Wow, okay, so that wave is completely wrong. You can see how it's breaking in between the panels, and part of it is straight up, and then it kind of comes down. It, it, that's just not right. It should be a standard wave that goes all the way across. Uh, so that's telling me that there are, th and you can see how things are not showing, they're showing up at the wrong time and everything. So that's telling me my panel layout's wrong. You know, I looked, I programmed it in X, uh, in Falcon Pi Player, to look at it from the back point of view. So, Let's flop it around. Let's say that instead of this being panel one, let's say that this is panel one. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and see if that fixes it. Back over here in Falcon Pi Player, uh, as I mentioned, I think that my perspective is wrong. I think we should be looking at it from the front perspective and not the back perspective. So in that case, from the front perspective, this would be panel one. This would be panel two, three is correct, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So let's see how this, I'm going to fix the rest of this and then we'll take a look at it. Be right back. Okay, that's better. We're getting closer. Um, still something's not quite right. Um, let's go back to the Falcon Pi player and let's uh, look at it one more time. Okay, so it's still a little off and I remember going back and thinking about the video that he didn't use 510 channels per universe. He used 512, which actually would make sense because each panel has 512 pixels. So that means each color is its own universe. So universe 1 would be red, and universe 2 would be blue in this case. Universe 3 would be green, or something like that. So it makes sense. So let's change all these 510s to 512s. But changing it here in Falcon Pi Player, I also have to change it in X lights to match this. So let me work through all this and make all these changes, and we'll see how it comes back in the end. That was it. I was using the wrong channel counts in my universes. So it's all working good. So I'm going to put uh, the video back on I was originally playing and see how that looks. Well, as you can see, the video is working. It's all working and it looks great. So I hope this helps you guys. I apologize for not doing videos before now because you guys have done a lot of videos that have really, really helped me get through a lot of things. And you guys have been really great about answering questions as well. So. I'm trying to give back. If you have any questions, please PM me and I'll try to explain in a little different way and all that. Until then, happy programming.